All right. Hello. Hello. Thank you all so much. Those of you who came uh, to attend this event in person and the many who are watching online. Uh, my name is Haley McNamara, and I am Vice President of Advocacy and Outreach here at the National Center on Sexual Exploitation, which is a nonpartisan nonprofit dedicated to addressing the full spectrum of sexual exploitation. Today, we are here to launch the 2020 Dirty Dozen List. This is an activism tool uh, which is centered on one simple premise, that no mainstream entity should profit from or facilitate sexual exploitation. Unfortunately, many well-established brands, companies, and organizations in America do just that. In today's world, corporations drive our culture. They influence how people communicate, what information they receive, and what trends are accepted or rejected. But right now, there are mainstream companies that are normalizing pornography, facilitating online sex trafficking and grooming, selling sex dolls and incest materials, or promoting eroticized child nudity books. The culture that accepts these things will continue to create more victims of sexual abuse and sex trafficking than can ever be rescued. It will fail to produce policies that prevent sexual harm, and its juries and judges will fail to convict exploiters. We stand in the gap to push back against this cultural tide and to demand that corporations respect human dignity across the entire web of sexual exploitation and abuse. Because of our drumbeat of grassroots activism, targeted media blitzes, and outreach to corporate leaders, we're making progress every year. We have many victories from the Dirty Dozen list, some of which I'll talk about more later, but I want to first acknowledge the most recent victory, which is United Airlines. United Airlines was previously listed on the 2019 Dirty Dozen list because it failed to train their air crews on the rising trend of passengers viewing pornography mid-flight on their personal devices, which met, was leaving many passengers stranded in a toxic envi and enclosed environment of sexual harassment. So we applaud United Airlines for changing its in-person flight attendant training to include the issue of passenger pornography use. Flight attendants have reported this update in training to the National Center on Sexual Exploitation and has also been confirmed by a United Airlines spokesperson. We're grateful for United's leadership and we're calling on other airlines to follow suit. This victory gives us renewed hope and commitment to the 2020 Dirty Dozen list, which features these companies listed on the screen behind me and listed on the dirtydozenlist.com. Notably, for the first time ever, we have a Dirty Bakers Dozen list. We've added a 13th target, um, which is Wyndham Hotels, which a colleague will discuss later. And I will begin by discussing the website Seeking Arrangement, uh, and then I'll, I, I will invite some colleagues forward to discuss other members of the Dirty Dozen list. Seeking Arrangement. As forms of commercial sexual exploitation continue to evolve from prostitution to pornography to webcamming and more, the phenomenon of sugar dating is certainly one of the latest frontiers. Sugar dating is marketed as a relationship in which young, attractive women can meet experienced men who will provide everything from mentorship to lavish vacations. In this system, um, men are encouraged to engage in no-strings-attached relationships with beautiful young women. Meanwhile, sugar babies, as they're called, are misled that this experience will empower them and benefit them financially. However, the truth behind sugaring tells a much darker story, one of deception, violence, and sexual exploitation. The largest hub of this new form of sexual exploitation is the website Seeking Arrangement, which targets college students who are struggling with student debt, with advertisements. Its CEO has even stated, why hope for financial aid when we, you can guarantee it with a sugar daddy? Seeking Arrangement even gives free premium accounts to those with a school email address. As a result, Seeking Arrangement currently claims to have more than 3 million college students on its platform, 
primed to become sexually accessible to more socioeconomically advantaged men. What we're seeing here is the capitalization and sexual exploitation of an entire generation's economic vulnerability as the student debt crisis climbs to the trillions of dollars. No student should have to sexually barter for their education. Further, make no mistake, sugar dating is pseudo dating, prostitution, and it's vital to push back against this exploitive trend. Research has found that the majority of sugar dating websites ought to be considered illegal because they form because of their forms of prostitution. Many individuals don't realize that sugar dating can amount to prostitution because the exchanges involve some socializing, some conversation. However, the entire premise of seeking arrangement is based on a power imbalance, a power imbalance that caters to the man's choice of sexual contact, contact in the relationship. And so many young women are vulnerable to exchanges contingent on sexual access. Further, women are misled by assurances that seeking arrangement says that sex is not always required. And so some women and girls enter sugar dating expecting a dinner date and instead facing sexual violence. This is the case for countless of individuals whose stories we have heard here, including the story of Emma, a 21-year-old college student who met a man on a sugar dating website and told him that she did not want to become physical. He agreed. He then flew her across the country to meet him and began trying to sexually assault her. She was left alone and vulnerable across the country. Unfortunately, there are many others who share her story and far worse, as even a victim assistant specialist with Homeland Security Investigations has spoken out, noting that sugar dating has the potential to go into sex trafficking situations, saying, quote, it's the isolation that, of the victims that are so similar and the unequal power of the relationships that people are going into. We must not capitulate to the exploitation of vulnerable persons or the spread of modes of prostitution in our culture. For example, the Apple App Store has rightly rejected the Seeking Arrangement app, yet Google Play is hosting this exploitive app even as I speak. So we call on Google Play to remove this and all thinly veiled prostitution apps from its app store. And now I would like to invite my colleague, Don Hawkins, who will discuss another member of the Dirty Dozen list. The pornography of today has created an unprecedented epidemic of sexual harm. Children and young people are being exposed to violent and degrading content that by default has served as their sex education. A host of public health harms have been associated with pornography, including negative impacts to the brain, rising sexual dysfunctions, psychological harm to children, harm to performers, increased sex trafficking and prostitution, increased sexual violence, and more. Once a social or a health issue involves problems that affect individuals or groups that are beyond their capacity to correct, responsibility must shift from the individuals and families to also holding the forces and influences that cause it accountable. This is why the National Center on Sexual Exploitation is calling on Visa and Amazon to stop providing the infrastructure to the sexual exploitation industry. Visa, a credit card network with one of the largest market shares, is partnering with the pornography industry by processing payments for pornography with themes of sexual violence, racism, incest, and the fetishizing of sex with minors. Other mainstream payment processors have rejected and, and prohibited the use of their systems on pornography websites, PayPal being the most recent one. By doing this, Visa is supporting and normalizing the pornography industry despite the impact that it has on public health or on the people in pornography directly. The pornography industry is not just another industry. The pornography industry has bragged about spending more than $1 million to actively lobby against protections meant to ensure that children and minors are not used in mainstream pornography. The pornography industry has also lobbied against common sense protections to performers' physical and sexual health, despite the fact that research has found that pornography performers have a high burden of sexually transmitted diseases. 
popular mainstream pornography websites, which Visa partners with, have even been caught hosting videos of sex trafficked women and children, and also of videos of children being sexually abused. And when women come to these websites asking that these videos of their abuse be taken down, they refuse to. And they instead make millions of dollars using Visa's payment processor. Is this the kind of content that Visa is willing to endorse? Amazon. Amazon is the world's titan of e-commerce, logistics, data storage, and media, but they also peddle endless amounts of sexual exploitation. As an online retailer, Amazon is in the business of selling incest-themed pornography, sex dolls, photography books with eroticized child nudity, pornography videos and magazines, and much more. As a media creator, Amazon Prime Video inserts unnecessary gratuitous nudity, um, extreme sexual violence, and simulated sex scenes into many of its original programming, while also providing very faulty parental controls. Amazon S3 and Amazon Web Services are also host to thousands of hardcore violent pornography and prostitution websites. To highlight how Amazon promotes incest, there appears to be thousands of incest-themed pornographic books under the so-called erotic section on Amazon's Kindle and Amazon.com. One example, I conducted a, a search of the term teen books, and it yielded both ebooks for toddlers as well as incest-themed photography books. How many young people are looking for age-appropriate content and are being thrown suggestions like daddy's favorite little girl? Currently, incest is, prevalent, is a prevalent form of sexual abuse, and according to conservative estimates, 34% of child sexual abusers are family members. The real-life trauma that these books sexualize and normalize is not a trifling matter. It leaves physical and mental scars that go on to cause pain to millions of Americans, and likely even many Amer of Amazon's employees themselves. When these themes are normalized and eroticized, it not only increases victim blaming by reducing empathy for real life victims, but it also encourages and escalates this abuse. Amazon normalizes child sexual abuse. They're selling a wide array of, child, of sex dolls, and many of these dolls have childlike facial features, small waists and hips, but exaggerated bust sizes. Since launching our campaign, some have been removed from the site, but many still remain. Some I saw last week are rated for ages infant and older and are included in the category of preschool toys. Uh, clearly these dolls are portraying women as literal sex objects, which contributes to coarsened social respect for women or values of consent. As noted in the Journal of Internet Law, owners also will habituate to sexual acts on child or adult dolls, deluding them into believing it's the norm. Amazon provides a home to hardcore pornography website by hosting these websites or their images and videos on Amazon S3 and, um, and Amazon services. A search of forums and discussion boards where pornographers frequently ask one another for advice on how to make a business of sexually exploiting others yields tips and directions to host their websites on Amazon servers. When the National Center on Sexual Exploitation randomly looked up who hosts were for three pornography websites, all of them were hosting content on, on S3. We will, report, we will release a report on this in the near future. In today's culture, where the public health harms of pornography are well documented, corporations such as Amazon have a renewed corporate responsibility to refrain from profiting from, normalizing, or promoting material that promotes sexual exploitation. Thus far, Amazon has much more work to do in order to adequately live up to that vital responsibility. Next, to announce our next member of the Dirty Dozen list, I'll invite Jake Robertson, our Director of Communications. The next member of the 2020 Dirty Dozen list is TikTok. With more than 500 million users that are active worldwide, TikTok is a social media video app for the creating and sharing of short videos. And the app is known, in particular, for being popular with minors. However, due to a lack of moderation 
and insufficient parental controls, TikTok has facilitated a space for sexual grooming by abusers or potential sex traffickers. These exploiters utilize TikTok to view minor users and either comment and or message these minors directly, often requesting sexually explicit videos. An advocacy group accurately called TikTok a hunting ground for predators to abuse children, and Forbes identified TikTok as a magnet for sexual predators. Although TikTok has recently increased certain security measures and launched an online safety campaign in response to certain child privacy law violations, it continues to operate in such a way that fails to truly protect its users, minors in particular. By default, all accounts on TikTok are public, which means that anyone on the app can see what even minors are sharing. Instead, TikTok should operate to default its safety controls to private, particularly for minors. While TikTok's digital well-being tools attempt to allow parents to limit on-screen time and potential exposure to sexually graphic content and those predators we talked about, these tools are insufficient and easily altered after being initially set up. Both the screen time management tool and the restricted mode require a passcode to enable and disable these settings. However, according to the app, both of those settings, your passcode only remains valid for 30 days and then must be reset. This places an unreasonable burden on minors to opt in to protecting themselves from sexually explicit content and predators again and again and again. Further, the ability to report content and accounts that are exploiting, harassing, and or grooming is not efficient. The reporting process requires that users go to the predator's profile, potentially being exposed to more of that content. And uh, additionally, reports to remove predators and predatory and ex sexually exploitative content have been ignored to the point that petitions have been created by users and signed by thousands of users to go to TikTok themselves to say this is a problem. This is particularly troubling in light of findings from the National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children, which surveyed over 40,000 school children and discovered that 25% of the children had live streamed with a stranger and that one in 20 children were asked while live streaming or in the comments of a posted video to take their clothes off. A spokesperson from the NSPCC commented on the study, linking it to TikTok, stating, we know that a significant amount of children are being contacted via this popular live streaming app such as TikTok by abusers who are using them as a hunting ground. For these reasons, TikTok is a member of the 2020 Dirty Dozen list, but we believe TikTok can make significant and effective steps to combat these issues by, number one, automatically defaulting to private when users first set up their TikTok account, Number two, automatically defaulting on the digital well-being's restricted mode and maintaining those, that restricted mode without it needing to be reset every 30 days. Number three, providing a prominent in-app reporting system for users that they can request and send their request to TikTok for moderation without having to have further access to sexually exploitive content. Number four, enforcing this policy by promptly moderating and removing accounts that engage in these actions. And number five, raising the age rating in the app store so that parents and families can accurately understand the risks that are involved with using this app. Next, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Kristen Price, legal counsel for the National Center on Sexual, Sexual Exploitation to introduce our next member of our list. Wish is a super discount shopping website where you can get sweatpants for $8 and umbrellas for 4 The app has over 500 million users and was ranked ahead of Amazon as the number one shopping app in the U.S. this week. But Wish has chosen to use its massive platform to facilitate and normalize abuses against and objectification of women and girls. For example, Wish allows spy cams to be sold on its website that are specifically marketed as useful for stalking women and secretly filming them in a state of undress. This is particularly disturbing given the rise of non-consensually shared pornography, also called revenge pornography, which is the distribution of sexually explicit content of individuals without their consent. This abusive practice harms millions of people each year. In South Korea, where spy cam voyeurism is pervasive, a woman recently took her life after her colleagues secretly filmed her in their hospital's changing room. 
he received a 10-month sentence. Any technology can, of course, be misused, but the spy cams on Wish are being advertised with pictures that encourage the misuse, filming women without their knowledge or consent. On a similar note, well over a year ago, we asked Wish to stop selling sex dolls, which portray women as sex objects and thus contribute to the perception that women exist for male use. While after an outcry, Wish removes some of the childlike sex dolls being sold on its platform, it continues to market dolls resembling adult women as well as female body parts. Profiting from the sale of sex dolls is inconsistent with any level of commitment to women's equality, not least because the dolls encourage men to dehumanize women and undermine the importance of consent. A doll, of course, can never say no. As a leading retail app, Wish is setting the tone for the online marketplace when it makes misogyny seem normal. We call on Wish to run its business ethically and to stop promoting and profiting from products that objectify women and girls. And now my colleague, Danny Pinter, legal counsel, will come up to talk about some other members of the list. Nevada was placed on the Dirty Dozen list first in 2019. Because of its failure to decriminalize sex buying and abolish brothels, it's a member of the Dirty Dozen list once again. Nevada is the only state in America that legalizes prostitution in some counties. The result is a rise of 63% in an illegal sex trade. In fact, only 10% of the prostitution occurring in Nevada is actually legal. And Nevada is top 10 for exploited and trafficked children. The truth is that sexual violence, racism, and socioeconomic disparity are an integral part of the prostitution experience. As recently deceased Dennis Hoff once said, I'm selling sex like McDonald's is selling burgers. The truth is he was selling women like burgers. And unlike McDonald's, the brothels are surrounded by iron gates, barbed wire, and the women aren't allowed to bring their cars on the property. They're required to live on the premises, sometimes not being allowed to leave for weeks at a time. There's no such thing as safe prostitution. As one survivor of a legal brothel once said, it's like signing a contract to be raped. And many women in the legal brothels get there by being trafficked into those spaces. Legalizing sex buying promotes demand for commercial sex, which fuels sex trafficking. By legalizing and promoting prostitution, Nevada is profiting from the commoditization and exploitation of women. Nevada is not safe for women, and for this reason, it remains on the Dirty Dozen list for 2020. This brings me to Massage Envy, our next member of the 2020 Dirty Dozen list. Massage Envy is the largest massage company in the world, and yet there's over 400 uh, allegations of sexual assault by its, by its therapists. Massage Envy continues to choose profits over customer safety. Ma uh, massage Envy does this through dangerous and coercive prof uh, policies. Massage, Envy, massage, massage Envy employees are actually encouraged not to call law enforcement when customers complain of sexual assault. One graphic description by a woman in her complaint describes how when she came to employees to complain about sexual assault, her perpetrator was permitted to stay in the room watching her, smiling at her. Massage Envy also did not require that reports of sexual assault be reported to the massage therapy board. What this means is that therapists who are accused of sexual assault continue to work and assault women again and again with impunity. Customers were also unwittingly required to sign away their rights through mandatory arbitration agreements. Arbitration agreements which actually um, insulated massage envy from even unlawful conduct. These lawsuits al alleging sexual assault began in 2016, but they continue to grow and grow. And despite the public outcry to this day, as far as the National Center is aware, Massage Envy has done nothing, nothing to change or alter its policies. 
sexual assaults are still occurring at Massage Envy, and lawsuits continue to be filed. To keep its model of profit by volume, Massage Envy is knowingly endangering its customers rather than making health and safety a priority. For this reason, Massage Envy remains on the dirty dozen list for 2020. At this time, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Benjamin Bull, to talk about the next member of the dirty dozen list. Thank you, Danny. All of us are familiar or know the hotel chain Wyndham Hotels and Resorts. They also own a brand of hotel called Super Aid, among others. Uh, they're prominent worldwide in the hospitality industry, with over 9,000 hotels and resorts worldwide. Unfortunately, Wyndham also profits from exploitive on demand pornography and is being sued by the National Center on Sexual Exploitation for facilitating underage sex trafficking. Wyndham has also been a named defendant in at least six other lawsuits filed by other organizations or law firms around the country alleging that they knowingly allow sex trafficking on their premises. After advocacy from the National Center on Sexual Exploitation, Hilton Worldwide, Hyatt Hotels, and, War and Starwood Hotels all made the decision to remove hardcore pornography from their hotels. Intercontinental Hotels has made it a brand standard to prohibit the distribution of any pornography at any of their hotels internationally. However, Wyndham continues to sell on-demand pornography despite consumer complaints and outreach from the National Center at all of their hotels and the hotels that they, that they own. As you've heard earlier, research shows that pornography is linked to increased sexual violence as well as other public health issues as, had, as has been declared in at least 15 states across the country through legislative resolutions. We urge Wyndham Worldwide to discontinue distributing and profiting from pornography and join us in fostering a world free from sexual exploitation. The National Center's lawsuit has been filed in the Northern District of California in San Jose. Our co-counsel are the prominent Pens uh, Pens Pensacola, Florida law firm of Levin and Papantonio and the noted lawyer Eric Bauer of Washington State. The plaintiff in our lawsuit was 16 years old when she was traveled, when she was trafficked at Wyndham Super 8 Hotel. She was trafficked for two years along with two other girls, along with several other girls, all of whom were underage. At, those, at, at Wyndham's properties, they were forced to perform commercial sex acts with men, 10 to 15 different men per day. Through the hotel staff and their employees, Wyndham knew or should have known that they were, these girls were being trafficked. Our complaint alleges specific facts, which include that large amounts of used condoms, empty lube bottles, and other sex-related items were found in the girls' hotel rooms. Payments for the hotel rooms were invariably in cash. The girls' physical appearance was bruised, beaten, and malnourished. There was a, con a continuous procession of older men entering and leaving the girls' rooms, the men never stayed longer than 15 or 30 minutes. There were excessive requests from the rooms for additional sheets, cleaning supplies, and room service. In several occasions, there was even a personal relationship between the front desk employees and Wyndham's and, and the girls' traffickers. In other words, the relationship between Wyndham's front desk employees and the traffickers where the front desk would actually call the traffickers and notify them when police were on the premises or coming. Wyndham financially benefited from the sex trafficking and the victimization of these girls and has developed and maintained a business model that attracts, fosters, and encourages commercial sex, this commercial sex market and the trafficking of girls uh, by traffickers and buyers alike. Thank you. Our next speaker again will be Haley McNamara. Haley? Thank you. While these issues are dark, 
and they can feel quite overwhelming, especially considering the mainstream corporations that are involved. But we know that we do have a winning formula of action because we've achieved so many victories in the past. These victories include Comcast. Comcast has significantly improved usability and parental control settings for cable and internet customers. And they told the National Center on Sexual Exploitation, we heard your feedback and made improvements, which are now impacting more than 20 million customers. Netflix, while it is still listed on the Dirty Dozen list, has taken some steps forward according to our requests. Netflix's parental controls have improved so that the four-digit pin codes used to block certain shows or ratings are consistent across profiles, thereby closing a loophole where children were previously accessing sexually graphic content. Further, there are now at least some content warnings at the beginning of their shows, and these policies are impacting nearly 150 million subscribers. We've achieved past victories with Google. Google, which has an over 87% market share for search engines, adopted a policy to prohibit pornographic ads and any ads that link to websites with sexually, graphic, sexually explicit content after activism from grassroots supporters through the National Center on Sexual Exploitation. Last year, out of concern over female sexual objectification, CVS Pharmacy told the National Center that it's which serves uh, an estimated 4.5 million customers daily, CVS decided last year to remove the annual Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue from their checkout areas and promotional displays across all stores. And the National Center on Sexual Exploitation, as was previously mentioned, has already significantly impacted the hotel industry, including Marriott, Hyatt Hotels, Starwood Hotels, Intercontinental Hotel Groups, and Hilton Hotels to stop profiting from on-demand pornography, which impacts an estimated 2 million hotel guests every day. And when you hear these numbers, I hope you realize there's actual people behind this. We had a sex trafficking survivor reach out to tell us that she was trafficked in one of those hotels. And often when, pe when men would buy her, they would order pornography on the TV and force her to act out what they watched. And she said when she realized that the hotels stopped selling pornography, she realized that maybe someone out there actually cared about women like her. And I say this to every survivor of every form of sexual exploitation, which we've touched upon here, that's being normalized and promoted by corporations. There are people who care about people like you, and we're not going to stay silent. There are so many more victories that I could list, and I encourage you to learn about more of them, which are on dirtydozenlist.com. But most importantly, to help make more victories by taking action on dirtydozenlist.com. This is your invitation to join us in this cutting edge, culture shifting mission. I truly believe that together we can actually shift the culture to respect human dignity in the private sector. Um, thank you so much and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Mm -hmm.